my wife Cheryl. We just want to welcome our guest here today. And Jeremy, thank you for your bunch showing up today. We're, we're going to be blessed with some good music and good preaching. So we'll be getting ready for that in a moment. But right now, just everybody stand up and give somebody a hug or shake some hands this morning. Amen. All right, I'll have y'all's attention. We're going to take up an offering now. Hello. Woo. Woo. Hello. Hello. We're going to take up an offering now. If y'all don't mind, we're going to pray. And uh, thank y'all. All right. Mark, you want to pray? Father God, we thank you just for this day. We thank you for uh, Jesus dying for us, Father, and rising again. 
Father, we just pray that you bless this offering and that we use it according to your will, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jeremy, you ready for this wild bunch? Every blessing tune my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above praise the mountain Fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, here by thy help I'm come. And I hope by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Jesus sent me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger and to post his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor! Daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee Prone to one to Lord I feel it Prone to leave the God I love Here's my heart Lord Take and seal it See that for thy courts above Come thou fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melody and sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it Seal it for thy courts above Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it Seal it for thy courts And if you are a children, it is time for Children's Church.
darkness of night surrounds me And I don't know what to say I have this blessed assurance You're the light that guides my way When the storms of life are raging And I'm drowning in my cares You are walking on the water Calmly speaking, don't despair You are the truth of life You are the narrow way You're the Alpha and Omega The perfecter of our faith You are the one Messiah You are the Prince of Peace You are the Lion of Judah You are the King of Kings Oh, oh, oh. When the valley's closing around me And the mountain seems too steep Your hand has never left me You're the shepherd, I'm the sheep when my sin is overtaken When I'm in a desert place Your word is what I thirst for And I long to see your face You are the truth of life You are the narrow way You're the Alpha and Omega The perfecter of our faith You are the one Messiah you are the Prince of Peace You are the Lion of Judah You are the King of Kings Oh, oh, oh. I saw the light I saw the light No more in darkness No more in night Now I'm so happy No sorrow inside Praise the Lord I saw the light I saw the light I saw the light No more in darkness No more in night Now I'm so happy No sorrow inside Praise the Lord I saw the light You are the truth of life You are the narrow way you're the Alpha and Omega, the perfecter of our faith. You are the one Messiah. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Lion of Judah. You are the King of Kings. You are the truth of life. You are the narrow way. You're the Alpha and Omega. The perfecter of our faith You are the one Messiah You are the Prince of Peace You are the Lion of Judah You are the King of Kings How about that? Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I have to tell you, when uh, Brother Lewis uh, messaged me, uh, he asked me uh, if I would like to come and, uh, and speak here. And uh, I was worried I didn't answer quick enough, so I messaged him, then I Facebook messaged him, 
And then I called him because I wanted to make sure that he had not found someone else. Uh, I grew up going to church in the old building. Uh, Kay Heron uh, played piano for us and it just uh, I have some wonderful memories. First time I ever taught an adult uh, devotion, I was eight years old. And my grandfather had fallen asleep and had not studied. And so Grandma gave me the book and the Bible and said, here you go. I want you to teach this. And I said, well, can I do that? I'm only eight. She said, well, of course you can. So I did it because she said I could. Uh, I taught on Jesus being the mediator between us and God. That's what, that's what I taught at eight years old. I didn't even know what mediator meant. And Grandma said, well, here's the Scrabble Dictionary. Look at it up. <laughs> And so I did, and it was a very sweet time, uh, and this church holds a sweet place for me. Uh, it, it's where I came to know the Lord. It's where I came to really study and, and understand His Word better. Uh, I received an open Bible for my ninth birthday, and that began my journey of really understanding what a study Bible could do for you. Uh, it's an, you know, it was an amazing Bible for the time. So when Lewis asked me to come, I said, you know what, I, it's on my bucket list of things. I want to preach here. <laughs> and uh, to see this beautiful new building is just, uh, I mean, Robin and I were in awe when we walked in. It just, y'all have done such a, an amazing uh, work with what God has given you. Uh, and I know that he has done all of it, but uh, y'all were the hands that he used, and it looks beautiful. So uh, I had a, a sermon prepared. And I had sent it to your sound booth guy and said, yeah, this is what I'm preaching on. And I got up this morning, and it happens a lot with, with pastors. Uh, that's not what I'm supposed to be preaching. Uh, there is a church that will hear that in two weeks, uh, but it won't be y'all. <laughs> uh, and then I had been working on, uh, if Lewis is anything like me, I have anywhere from 100 to 150 sermons that if somebody says, I need you here, I could preach that immediately. And some of them I have worked through and I have written out. And some of them are just two lines in my Bible. And then I will take it from there and go. Uh, and so when I really felt God leading me to a different message, that's, I said, you know what, okay, I'm not going to fight this. Uh, I fought it before and it's not pretty. So today we're going to be... Uh, talking about hearing God's voice and I need you to understand is this when I got my glasses I did not want them here's what happened that finally did it in for me we were sitting in Sunday school and someone asked me to read and I had my Bible here and I finally said is it dark in here <laughs> and everybody rolled with laughter and said, no, it's not dark. And my wife said, sweetie, you, you got to get glasses. I said, you know, I really don't want glasses. I don't think I need them. I can squint down to 20-20 vision. And I still can. <laughs> but it gives me a headache. So I, I now wear glasses. Now I actually now wear bifocals. Uh, that didn't hurt near as bad as getting glasses. Bifocals, I was like, yes, please, anything to help me. But we also have some relatives that have a dire need for hearing aids. And let me tell you, glasses is nothing. People put glasses on. When you need hearing aids, you need to get them. So if you're out there and you know you need them, just do it. Just help everybody out. And if you do need them, you probably are not hearing what I'm saying right now. So somebody needs to write it down for you. But here's the thing, when we need help like that, we refuse it because we say, no, that is a slight against who I am. And for men, it's a slight against my youth. I don't want help hearing. I can hear just fine. It's your speaking that is the problem. <laughs> here's the problem. We have physical ears and we have spiritual ears. Okay? Okay. When your physical ears need help and you don't get it, you miss out on a whole lot of things. 
you miss out on the sound of the birds, on people honking at you because you pulled out in front of them because you don't have glasses either. Okay? But when your spiritual ears are damaged, you miss out on oh so much more. Okay? Let's take a look. If you have your Bibles, open it up to Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 16. Then the disciples said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered to them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But for the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, saying, You will indeed hear, but never understand. You will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you, and we thank you for your word, and we thank you that it is always true. It is never changing. And Father, today I pray that if there is someone here that has been desiring to hear your voice, Father, today would be the day that they hear it. Father, if it is uh, for a, a call to repentance or salvation, Father, that they would heed that and listen, Father. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, with our spiritual ears, we can hear the, the voice of God. Y'all believe that? Okay. So, you don't have to raise your hands if you don't want to, but is there anybody here that knows without a doubt they are saved, that they are redeemed, that they are one of God's children, but they are not hearing the voice of the Lord? So let me ask you, if you're a child of God, and God's word said, my sheep will know me. They know my voice. And you're a child of God and you're not hearing God's voice. What's the problem? Where's the breakdown? We're going to talk about that this morning. There's a couple of things about the voice of God we need to understand. First, there's a couple of truths. First is that God can use any voice, any voice to bring about salvation. He can use the voice of someone that is lost to bring about salvation for you. Do you realize that? You can see the situation and hear someone else, things that have gone on in their life, and it can actually draw you closer to God. If you don't believe me, go down to the prison one time. And you can truly say, there but for the grace of God, go I. Robin and I were talking the other day. You know, phones and devices and just social media, praise God they were not around when I was in high school. I was an idiot, and I would have filmed everything that I did. God had forethought to go, you know what, that doesn't need to come around until Jeremy Wilson is an adult. <laughs> Because he's going to do stupid things even then, but not anything like he would do when he was a teenager. But God can use anything to draw us closer to him, okay? He can use the death of someone. Did you know God can speak through the death of someone? God can speak through the birth of someone. He can speak through the wedding of someone. Do you know the two greatest times where salvation comes is a time of mourning and a time of celebration. Those are the two greatest times that salvation comes. God can speak in any situation and bring about a change in you or change in one of your loved ones. But how do you know if it's the, the word of God? How do you know if it's the voice of God? See, that's where everything starts falling down and we start kind of breaking down. You know, we get up here and we preach and, and we teach Sunday school. And we go, oh, well, you just need to listen to God. 
well, how do I know it's God? Well, first thing you need to do is compare it to Scripture. Scripture never changes. And it's always been the same. So, if all of a sudden God is telling you something that's completely and utterly contrary to Scripture, that's not from God. Okay? Second truth about God speaking. God can speak to anyone, but listen to this, but to continue to hear His voice, His children must be obedient. Okay? Does that say God quits speaking? No. God is always speaking, but we cannot hear when disobedience has come to the forefront. Okay? And you go, well, look, I don't think I'm being disobedient right now. I am still not hearing God's voice. What's, what's going on? Look, <laughs> disobedience is kind of a funny thing. Not funny ha-ha, but funny strange. It can be something that you've been disobedient in your entire life to the point that you no longer view it as being disobedient. You view it as just being a character flaw. Okay? See, we have that in the church as well. We have people that we go, oh, don't worry about them. That's just the way they are. You mean they're lost? Or they just have a really bad attitude that is not reflecting the truth and the love of Christ? Which one did you mean there? Oh, well, I mean they have a character flaw where they're not reflecting the true love of Christ. Well, that's an issue. And chances are, if that same person that has those character flaws is coming up to you going, God told me that you need to, you know what, just be quiet. <laughs> I know God's not speaking to you right now. You know why? Because you're a gossip and you're busy talking. You see? Sometimes we have a sin in our life that we have had for so long and we've become so comfortable with it that we don't view it as sin anymore. Because we have begun to compare it to the sins of other people. See, it's really easy to do. You take the worst, you know, I always like to say this. We take our best day and compare it to someone else's worst day and we look like a saint every time. You take my least offensive sin and I use that term lightly because every sin is offensive and odorous to God. Makes him sick. But I'm going to use it in, 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 in secular terms. We take our smallest sin and compare it to someone else's biggest sin. That's why when you begin to confront someone, are you a good person? Well, I'm not a murderer. Well, good gracious, that ex escalated quick. I wasn't talking about being a murderer. But isn't that what we do? The reason we don't hear God's voice is because a lot of times we don't want to hear God's voice. Because maybe God has been telling you for years, it's time to get your debt paid off and go into the mission field. And that ain't what we want to hear. So we begin to talk to ourselves and go, well, that wasn't God's voice. Really? Was that the enemy wanting you to get your debt paid off? And not be in debt to someone anymore? Was that the enemy wanting you to go and help homeless people? Yeah, I think it was the devil. It must have been him. Doesn't make sense, does it? Disobedience comes in so many different forms. We have our minds set on what that looks like. And then we begin to base all of our decisions on, well, is that being obedient to God? Well, yes, I'm being obedient. On which points? Well, these, not this one, because he didn't mean that for me. That's for someone else. That doesn't make sense, right? John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Here's some ways that God speaks to us. He can speak to us physically. Okay? Listen to the preacher here. He can speak to us physically through our bodies, how our bodies react to something. Do you know what fear, like true adrenaline rush fear is like? Where your heart beats super fast and something in you says, you need to move out of the way. And you move out of the way and a car comes by. 
See, God can speak to us through our physical bodies, okay? Physically make us have a... Rob and I went to a church we were visiting in Tyler one time. We walked in the door, and both of us got knots in our stomach. And we were like, whew. And we, we ignored it, and we went on in. About a quarter of the way through the service... I got up and said, we're leaving. Something's wrong here. And let me tell you, I firmly believe that was God pulling us out of a situation that was about to get really, really ugly. Okay? That happens. When you are walking in the Spirit and you are seeking things in the Spirit, God will physically stop you from doing things. Okay? I'm not saying every time you get sick, go, oh, God's telling me something. It may just be that that you ate some shrimp scampi you shouldn't have eaten. Okay? That's where obedience and listening to God comes from. Okay? Oh, I knew God told me I shouldn't eat that. No, God told you you shouldn't have ate four helpings of that. Okay? There's a difference. After salvation, hearing God's voice is not the problem. It's understanding it's God's voice and listening to it. And here's where we start having problems. We will feel that God is leading us to something. And it's something we really want to go do. And we'll go, well, you know, God does want us to go places. And I think Hawaii would be an excellent mission field. I'm here to tell you, Hawaii is a phenomenal mission field that is woefully understaffed. Okay? Because if I came to your church and said, well, me and Robin feel that <laughs> we need to be missionaries in Hawaii and we'd like your church to support that. Exactly. I see some of you going, I'll do that. <laughs> when God speaks to us in a very clear way, there's always going to be affirmation from godly people and from the Word of God. There will be affirmation. God just doesn't go, do X, Y, and Z, and there is never any affirmation to that. Let me tell you, when we moved to Kenya, here's what happened. I went, I knew when I got back, God was saying, this is where you need to go. And I just let that stew and sit. And I compared it against Scripture. Is this something out of the character of God to tell me to do this? No, it's not. Is it completely within his word that this is something that I should do if there's opportunity? Absolutely. My wife asked me, are we supposed to move to Kenya? I said, no, I, no, I don't think so. Pat asked me, are y'all moving to Kenya? And I said, no, I don't think so. About two months later, Robin wakes up in the middle of the night. She wakes me up and she said, we're supposed to move to Kenya. And I said, yes, I know. <laughs> she said, why didn't you tell me? I said, I was waiting for some confirmation, some affirmation. That next day, I had two pastors come up and say, look, I've been really praying about this. I think you're supposed to move to Kenya. And I said, I know. And they were like, what do you mean you know? Well, I know. Yeah, I found out this morning at 3 o'clock. I knew that voice was true. And we followed that through. And we were taking steps of faith by day, by day, by day. And God was speaking to us. And we would argue with God and go, Oh God, but I still have debt. And what we said was, when we were young, if we didn't have any debt, we would do what you told us to do. And God said, No, you're going to go do this. And we went, Okay. But I just want to remind you, God, we, we have debt. And then out of the blue, checks would come in and people would go, this is supposed to be to pay off your debt. And before that summer, it was gone. And you know what we did? We still made excuses. <laughs> well, my debt's paid off, but we still have a house that we... Are, okay? God was speaking clearly. And that's the problem. When he does speak clearly, sometimes we want to argue back with him. 
because he doesn't know as much as us. Here's another way God will speak. He will speak through other people, other Christians, and even lost people. He will speak through angels. Look at Mary and Joseph, Joshua, Balaam. For goodness sake, God used a donkey to speak to Balaam. And said, look, I'm just trying to save your life. There's an angel right there that's going to cut your head off if you take another step. And then the angel came down and said, I was hoping you would take another step, buddy. He speaks through his word above all things. Okay. People go, I'm not hearing from God. Really? You're not hearing from him because you're not reading his word. This is, this is what he says. When Brother Lewis gets up here and preaches, he doesn't preach what Brother Lewis says. He preaches what God said. Y'all going to be shocked when you get to heaven and the voice of God has a deep East Texas accent. <laughs> I firmly believe his voice will sound like whatever we need it to sound like. He speaks through visions and dreams. I believe he still speaks through visions and dreams. That doesn't mean if you have this vision and you go, oh my gosh, it's the apocalypse and I need to tell people, uh, just keep your mouth closed. Most of the time I would say that if God is speaking to you through a vision or a dream, it is for a specific purpose for you and maybe one other person. <laughs> okay? I don't believe he gives visions like he gave to John anymore. Okay? Because guess what? What if he gives you a vision that the world is ending? Is it going to be any different than what John has already told us? Because guess what? I promise you, the world is ending. Don't have, to, don't have to have a vision for that. Don't have to have a dream for that. My grandmother taught me very early on, there are times that when we read God's word, there are things that God makes visible and even audible to us personally and it's just for us I don't have to share it with everyone else and there are other times that I'm studying God's word that he gives me a word that truly is a prophetic word not a prophet like I'm telling the future a prophetic word meaning this is the word that you need to read to these people today Y'all realize that's what prophecy is. It is speaking the word of God to the right person at the right time to bring about glory for God in a specific situation. That's what prophecy is. You've got a strong prophet right there. <laughs> because he tells you what you need to hear when you need to hear it and how you need to hear it. Okay? Sometimes we need to hear God is love and sometimes we need to hear God is vengeful. Both of those are true. But sometimes people don't hear that God is love. They need to hear God is vengeful. And he hates sin. Finally, God speaks in a still, small voice. Reference Elijah. And I have this quote I want to read, a quiet man recoils at the, the whisper in the snow, but a loud man strains to hear an avalanche. I'm going to read that again. A quiet man recoils at the sound of a whisper in the snow, but a loud man strains to hear an avalanche. Maybe if you're not hearing God right now, it's because you're talking too much telling God what you need and what you want and what you desire and what he needs to do rather than going, God, here I am, use me. What would you have me do? You understand what I'm saying? If you're not hearing God, maybe you need to be quiet. God created us in three parts. He created our body. We communicate with our senses. We communicate with the physical world. Our, you know, senses of touch and hearing and sight and sound. And our physical body is dying. It's been dying since the day we were born. 
but it's how we move around from place to place. We can use our physical body to encourage people. Getting a hug from somebody that really knows how to give a hug, there's nothing more encouraging. Hearing your name spoken with praise is pleasing to the ears, right? Seeing your driver's license photo, well, no, maybe not that one. <laughs> Seeing a beautiful picture of your family together brings pleasure to the eyes, right? And the smell of fried chicken on Sunday afternoon. Mmm. <laughs> and then we have our soul. <clears throat> I had the second part, our soul. We communicate through reason, through feelings, through thoughts, through emotions. Okay? Sometimes those emotions and the physical kind of come together. When our wife says, fine. See, she's spoken physically, but she's spoken logically to us because logically we say it ain't fine there's something else going on right you realize that's how they're speaking to us men when men say it's fine guess what ladies it's fine <laughs> it's just and guys don't try going fine because the woman will go okay good <laughs> and they will go on and never give it a second thought finally our spirit our spirit is how we communicate with God. Okay? That's it. That's how we communicate with Him. We can cry out physically, and yes, that's great. But if we're not walking in the spirit, as Paul says, all it is is clanging cymbals. Okay? It doesn't mean anything. John 3, 6 says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Only after this takes place can we commune with God. The Spirit of God speaks to our spirit, listen, about who God is. You realize we can't understand fully who God is by our senses, right? Even by our logical thinking. We can only begin to glimpse who He is through the Spirit. We've heard people over the years go, you know, when I get to heaven, I'm going to go up to God and just... I'm going to shake his hand, tell him what a good job he's done. Man, please. You'll be crying like a baby on your face before God when you finally realize his glory. He's not something to be taken lightly. And neither is his voice when he's speaking to you. See... When God speaks to us, he's speaking to us about the basic issues of life. And let me, let, me, let me read these off to you. Number one is relationships. How we relate to God, that's what God speaks to us about. How we relate to him. How we relate to others and how we relate to ourselves. I'm going to read those off again to you. As far as relationships go, when God speaks to us, he speaks about how we relate to God himself, how we relate to others, and how we relate to ourselves. And if you need proof of that, go back to Jesus' teachings. And what does he teach about? There is only one God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Humble yourself before men and they will know that you're mine. Guess what? The message has not changed. And you go, well, that was Jesus speaking. Yes, that was God speaking. The things that Jesus spoke about are the exact same things that God will speak about to you today. The very same things. Are you being too religious? Guess what? God's going to speak to you about that. Don't be religious. Be in the relationship with God. He speaks to us also about things that equip us to make wise, godly decisions. Okay? So if God comes up and just begins to speak to you and says, 
You need to sell everything you own. Everybody's going, okay, great. And buy yourself a brand new Maserati. Is that scriptural? Is that humbling yourself? No, that's exalting yourself. Guess what? That ain't God speaking to you. And it is not the devil speaking to you. You know who that is? That's your flesh speaking to you. Okay? That's your flesh. So here's some practical steps to hear the voice of God from Scripture. Number one, ask for understanding. 1 Kings 3 9 says this. This is Solomon speaking. He says, Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? Moms and dads, pray that prayer in your house. Pray that God gives you an understanding mind to govern your household. And if any of y'all ever get a chance to go to the state house or Congress, pray that prayer over them because they need it. So the first practical step is to ask for an understanding heart. The par- what I read the first about the parable, what did Jesus say? The reason I talk to them in parables is because they are too dumb to understand the spiritual things because they don't have the spirit in them right now. I have to break this down into spirituality 101 for dummies. Okay? Because they could not understand that. They didn't have education. They didn't have reading. And Jesus said, the reason I tell them the stories like this is because I want them to get a grasp on how important the kingdom of God really is. Pray for wisdom in those areas. Next, Set aside a time and a place to meet with God. This is out of Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. You could move out, you could mark out prayed and put, and there he got on his knees and embraced his heavenly Father in spirit because he'd missed him so much. See, that's a different way to look at prayer, isn't it? You know, there's times that I will say, be in a, in a group and I'll go, anybody want to pray and dismiss us? And, and everybody just kind of sit there and I'll go, does anybody want to petition before the throne room of God, the creator of the universe, and thank him for this wonderful gathering today? Well, then hands go up. See, because we have a skewed view of how we speak to God, right? And let me tell you, God desires for you to speak to Him just as much as you desire for Him to speak to you. And He doesn't want you shouting orders at Him on what to do. You know, I've used this before, and my kids have heard this. I know my kids love me. But if I went for a whole year... And not a single one of them sought me out to tell me that they loved me or to give me a hug. How awful would that be? But let's take it another step. Let's say every day I told my children, I love you so much. I'm so grateful that you're in my life. And for a year solid, I did that every single day. And they never once even turned and looked at me when I said it. And then they're out somewhere and go, you know, my dad doesn't love me. He doesn't talk to me. He doesn't spend time with me. Well, I know that's not true because I've said all these things and I've done all these things. What's the problem? They weren't listening. Flip that around. God absolutely loves you and desires a relationship with you. Don't you dare say he is not speaking to you if you're one of his children. Okay? The problem is we're not listening and we're not applying what he said. If you have some sin in your life here in a minute, we're going to have an opportunity for you to come and get rid of it. 
Jesus destroyed that sin at the cross. And you went, no thank you, I will piece this back together and put it in my pocket for another day. That's what we do. Next, have a quiet time, a daily quiet time, or a reading plan. Look, read your Bible. Read it. It's not that hard. And I don't know if y'all use King James Version, New King James. I use the ESV because it's easier for me. I went to Leon. So. <laughs> Next. Meditate on the word. Psalm 1, 1 through 2 says this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Let's see what time we got. Oh, I got time. <laughs> so... Let's say you are hearing God's voice and you begin to obey. There's some problems. Number one, you need to make sure it's God. And like I said earlier, you want to test that. Line it up against Scripture. Okay? There's a man named Vody Bauckham. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of him. He's a wonderful evangelist. He lives in Nigeria now with, I think they adopted nine kids now. Uh, he's from Houston area. Just a powerful, powerful man of God. <laughs> he says... God told me does not replace the Bible says. And there's some people that need to understand that. Because they'll just, oh, oh, well, God told me I need to do that. Really? He told you that, huh? Hmm. Next. So we're going to test it against Scripture. And next we're going to seek out counsel from godly people. Okay? For affirmation. See, we've gone to Scripture and go, yeah, this lines up scripturally with what God says. And I believe He is leading me to this end. But you know what? I need to get with my faith family and the people who know me intimately, spiritually, and ask them to pray about that and see what, what kind of confirmation or affirmation they get. Get with people that are as strong or stronger, preferably, than you are spiritually. What I tell people when we talk about having an accountability partner, don't get someone who has the same sin problem as you. Because they will begin to excuse your sin for you. Ah, oh, man, that's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Uh-uh. No, get someone who has never struggled with that sin and go, you're an idiot. Quit it. Why do you keep doing that? You know what's going to happen. I've only had a few men that have remained in my life that I've been able to talk to that way and go, you're an idiot, you need to stop. That still text me. Most of them are cold out pretty quick. Because that's not what we want. And so, if you are struggling with whether or not God has told you something, don't go to someone who loves you beyond all belief and believes anything that comes out of your mouth to give you affirmation. Go to someone you know is going to test it against Scripture and be prayerful about it. Start with your pastor. Okay? Next, we begin to hear, did God really say that? And let me tell you, this comes from a wide variety of people. It'll come from self, of course. But it'll come from people in the church. When we told people we were going to Kenya, let me tell you. Oh, you mean God's going to send y'all over there? Your babies could die over there from malaria. I am not kidding you. We heard that so many times from people in the church. Trying to evoke fear out of us. And of course, very quickly, we would say, well, the West Nile virus is in Dallas, and it's killed more people than malaria has. You know, <laughs> or I would have to go. You know what? Nobody has promised tomorrow. We could die on the way to the airport. Okay. But I want to read something to you. Whenever you begin to hear, did God really say? 
Because look, if someone comes to you and says, God told me to do this, I want you to be prayerful. Your first word should not be, did God really say that? Because I want, I want you to listen. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast in the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. The serpent said to the woman, you will surely not die, for God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. If God has spoken to you, and you are sure he's spoken to you, get with godly people to affirm it. Okay? If someone comes to you and says, God has spoken to me, don't you dare say, did God really say that? Because here's what happens. Number one, when you've spoken that God has said something to you, don't use a platform like this and get up and say, well, God told me that is a time for quiet reflection. And you go to people quietly and you say, you know what? I feel God is leading me to this. I feel like he has spoken this deep in my spirit. I'm convinced that this is true, but I want to be sure. You will have people that introduce doubt. They make you doubt yourself. Are you sure? Just like Satan said, did he actually say? The inference is you misunderstood, right? Next, makes you doubt God's promise. Did he really mean that you would die? Next, makes you doubt God. You will surely not die. He immediately put his place in that of God's, stating something completely contrary to what God has already spoken. God told them they'd die. He said, you surely will not die. And it makes you trust in others. Listen to me. God knows that when you eat this, this will happen. Do you see how quickly Eve was turned? just a few words when God speaks to us and he speaks to us in our spirit and he speaks in such a way that changes the very depth of who we are and we've received affirmation from other godly people we have received confirmation from his word obedience is the next step and you go, well, I, I flat don't know what God has told me to do. I don't, I don't understand. What am I supposed to do? Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Tell me again you don't know what God's telling you to do. Go ahead, tell me. Come on, tell me one more time. Somebody. Nobody? Go ye therefore make disciples. Just start with that. Worry about the baptizing later. Start with the making disciples. And then move on. <coughs> before you can make a disciple, you have to be a disciple. Before you can be a disciple, you have to have salvation. And before you have salvation, you need to understand that you are a sinner in the eyes of God and repentance needs to happen. It means that you need to turn away from the sin that's in your life, the sin that's destroying you, the sin that you know is a sin, but you have chosen to ignore. Okay, look. When we begin to ignore sin, we begin to ignore the voice of God. If you are living in a situation that you know is contrary to God's word, Look, this is deep. You might want a pen. Quit it. Stop doing it. Well, I can't stop doing it. You don't understand my situation. Look, I understand your situation way better than you realize. Look, I died and was brought back to life. 
And if you're a child of God, so are you. Don't tell me I don't understand. I understand fully what sin looks like. I understand the destructive nature it has. And I understand how willfully accepting it can completely destroy you and everyone around you. It's called collateral damage. And let me tell you, a lot of you are walking around like a hand grenade ready to go off. We're going to have Hannah come up and play. And if you have something you need to repent of, I don't know how y'all do it here. Uh, I always say getting down physically helps you get down spiritually. But if that's something you need to do this morning or you have some sin in your life that you need somebody to just pray to help you with, to overcome, we're going to have just a few minutes to do this. Don't need a lot of time to decide if you've got issues that you need to come take care of. Hannah's going to play. I'll be down front. And uh, we're going to close with that. I'm going to pray right now. Father, thank you so much for your word. Father, we thank you that your word is here as your voice. Father, there are so many other ways we can hear it. But Father, if uh, we've become deaf or we have become uh, insensitive to it, Father, I pray that you would uh, bring to mind uh, sin in our life, things we need to repent of, or Father, just a stubborn streak that we won't let go of. Father, I pray that we would open your word, hear your voice, and we would react to it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Come out of sadness